Hello everybody, um, today I'm going to do a video on how to prepare your paints and mix your paints for the Shelley Art slash Fluid Bloom technique. This is my version of it, so um, I hope you can bear with me. Now, this technique is fabulous, it really is, and um, yields some just amazing results. However, <laughs> the ingredients, original ingredients um, used with this technique um, were sourced in Australia because that's where the lovely Shelley lives. So it's kind of gone worldwide. Um, I think most of you um, pourers out there would have heard of it by now. Uh, so what I'm going to try and do is um, I'm going to try, I'm, I'm going to prepare the, the, the recipe in line with the ingredients that are available to us here in the UK and perhaps in other parts of Europe. All right, so any of you guys um, watching in the US perhaps or other parts of the world, um, it, oh, it's still quite difficult because it, it, this, <laughs> this is the downside of this technique in my opinion. You can't always get the exact ingredients and they all vary worldwide depending on where you are. So. Um, you know you might benefit from the actual consistency of the paints watching that if you aren't in the uk um you might be able to get the ingredients i'm really not sure they vary all over the world which is a bit of a pain but i'm going to work with what is available to me in little old jersey in the channel islands which is just off the uk so we're classed as uk all right now this is completely different from the Dutch pour. It's um, in fact the complete opposite. Whereas if you do the Dutch pour, you're working with paint and water for 90% of the time. You may add a bit of flow troll if you want, you don't have to at all. However, this one is a completely different science. And I mean science, because you're working with lots of different products to get the results you want. And it can be a little bit frustrating and um, I did take the course, it's wonderful. However, you need to practice this to get it right. There's so many different um, methods of doing this. Uh, there's so many things that can go wrong with this, but once you get it right, and that means practicing, it means you have to practice getting your paint consistency right, um, your cell activator right, um, the products, and most importantly how you blow that cell actor out cell activator out over the colors okay so i'm now going to um start with preparing the pillow wall base but it's referred to in this technique as the pillow completely opposite consistency of a dutch pour it's a lot thicker all right now Another thing I'd like to point out, when you start with this technique, please start small. Because what I found by doing this is I can probably take it to an 8x8 eight eight canvas or MDF wood circle or a 6x6 six six tile and that's it. Because unless you've got one of those spinning contraptions that a lot of, a lot of people use, and they do work well depends what kind of result you want but if you want to maintain that beautiful cell structure that's created with this technique you kind of you kind of have to go stay on the small side so just for the sake of this video okay and to show you how to mix the paints i've just got myself a small six by six mdf wood circle so what I do is I buy a sheet of MDF, okay, it's just, it's just um, fabricated wood. And I buy a sheet from B&Q, our local um, DIY store. And I give it to my dad, it's wonderful. And he cuts out the circles for me. All right, but I'm sure you can buy these probably already cut on Amazon or eBay. All right, so we're just going to use that. And I've got it resting on just a little pot, not a pot. There you go. Okay, so these are the ingredients 
that I use for the pillow. We're going to start with the pillow. This might be a lengthy video because it is like a science lesson. Believe me, it really is. You will have a degree in science after you've learned this technique. Um, now, I normally, bear with me, it's very heavy. I've just bought this. This is what I use for my pillow. It's Valspar, brilliant white interior walls and ceiling silk. Okay, it's quite a thick paint. That's what you want. You do need to, however, you do need to stir it a lot because what you do get with this, or what we do over here, I don't think, I've got um, a friend in uh, Canada and the base she uses, it's, it, it's beautiful. I'm not sure which one it is. It's um, the lovely Pamela and uh, Pamela Radwin. She's a um, fantastic artist in her own right. Hi, Pamela. <laughs> anyway, this one does have a lot of gassy bubbles in it. So when you actually go to pour, you just see all these bubbles everywhere and it's really frustrating because when you start to pour and stretch those, that, that bloom out, all these little, what you call as referred to in the technique is measles start to appear. And it's not very nice. We've come up, we've tried to come up with all sorts of different um, ways of getting rid of them. Um, and I think the most, I think the most successful one so far is, is to actually, when you buy it, okay, give it a good mix, okay? I've now decided to shake it all up because at the top, when you open the tin, the, there's a liquid that sits on the top, which separates from the actual paint. So I give it a good stir. So um, if you can do that, that's great. And then I decant some paint. I'll show you from there. Oh, show you. And I pour it into a jug and I just put a plastic lid over it. You can put it in anything, yogurt pop or yogurt pops, anything, just to can some and let it sit. I know, wait for it, about a week to two weeks for those air bubbles to release. Okay. I know it's, I'm not very good at waiting on things. I haven't got the patience. This is why I, I get a little bit frustrated. But for this technique, you just have to if you want good results. However, I'm going to work with an alternative, which is a, we, we have all kind of worked on this in our UK group. And um, instead, I'm using my X2 Free Flow from Specialist Crafts, ready to pour acrylic paint, okay? It's too thin, you can't use it directly from the bottle. Okay, so this is where it's the opposite of the Dutch pour, it's too thin. So what I'm doing, I'm mixing it with, wait for it, it's PBO Studio Acrylics Bindex. Okay, this helps stabilize the paint, okay? And it does make it thicker. You don't need a lot, all right? I'll show you. So, you can get all this on Amazon. Now, this technique isn't necessarily <laughs> cheap. Um, because we have had to source um, a lot of these ingredients from overseas and um, that's why it can get a little bit costly. But hopefully the more we practice and the more we come together with all our different bits of information and knowledge from each other, um, the more we find out after trying, trial and error, what, what we can use as alternatives. Right, so okay, I'm gonna pull this pillow. I'm going to make it up. I'm going to just pour it in a jug. You don't need a lot of paint for it. Okay, so let's start with, I haven't got a lot of this left actually, so I hope I can get enough out. So it's quite, it's quite thin. Let me show you what I mean. When I say, when I say thin, I mean it's just a pouring Thickish. Okay. Still runs off the stick nice and smooth. But it doesn't really have many bubbles in. Okay. Unlike the wall paint, the house paint. But it's still still too thin for this technique. So I'm going to add, you don't actually need much of this, a PBO Bindex to it. Now this is, a lot of this technique, people say, oh, can I have the exact ratio and the measurement? I don't, 
I don't really do that ratio thing. I eyeball it and I'll show you uh, the consistency after I try to. So you just tip a bit in. Okay, and I'm going to mix that up. Give it a nice mix. Don't go mad if you don't want to get too many air bubbles to from all the stirring. You want it to be quite thick because you want it to sit. Like a, they call it the pillow, so it's sort of puffed up. Okay. I actually think that's enough. We've <laughs> probably done it too thick now. Yeah. Okay. It wasn't much. So it's still it's not you can't really tell. When I pour it out, you'll see. It's like um I'm trying to think of a consistency. It does leave a trail, most definitely, and it takes a good say probably about a good 30 seconds for that trail to disappear back into the paint. Okay. Um Trying to compare it to something. I guess a bit like thick double cream. Anyway, you'll see it when I pour it. So that's that done, okay? So that is for the sake of having to wait for the other house paint, the bubbles to release, I'm using this, okay? So it's the X2 acrylic mixed with the PBO Bindex. So you can get rid of those, put those out the way. Right, so that's my pillow. Now, this is the paint part of it I really don't like doing. Um, this is mixing your colours with the pouring medium. Now the pouring medium that um, Shelley has in the US, I think it's called, I can't never pronounce it, Tobermans, Tobermans, something like that, yes. Untinted base. I'm just gonna have some water, excuse me. It's quite warm today again. Um, it's fabulous I and mean, it's literally untinted. So you can add paint to it, it doesn't cloudy it or make it dull, okay? Whereas, I suppose the one we've got closest to that, that everybody appears to be using in the UK, is, you've got to get this right there when you go into B&Q, this is where I get mine from. It is Valspar Wood and Metal V700 Blend. Okay, and the most important thing is, it is the C base, because there's A, B as well. You want the C, all right? So it can take dark colors. And it is um, an interior gloss, gloss, okay? I'll put all the list in the description. I don't like using this because it stinks. So I've got to be very careful because I do get headaches and this stuff's quite potent. So just for the sake of this video, I'm going to not wear a mask, but I do normally wear a mask when I'm mixing these paints until when it comes out to actually blow. You, of course, you can't wear a mask. So, oh, you know, take the lid off. Now, this is where I, this is a tablespoon, okay? So I'm going to pour some in. Ugh, it's horrible. So it's about a tablespoon here. Let's see how I go with that. I might as well do it for all the colours while I'm at it. That one. You might need a little bit bit more it's depending on the brand of paint you use some are thinner and thicker than others so how many colors have I got um, this isn't cheap either by the way this it's about 25 I think for a pot so I'm using green green I need another one okay so now I filled up put that away Ugh, four little pots with a tablespoon probably just under of the Valspar wood and metal blend V700 interior gloss base C okay next to go into the mix this um, apparently helps with cells this is the um, Chromas Joe Sonia gloss varnish polyurethane water-based okay now there is a shop the lovely lynn has the shop in the uk so you just need to have a look at joesonia.co.uk if you want to get some of this and you can order it what i do i eyeball this as well i literally put uh, um, one 
about two drops two drops that's it don't need much of that this is also quite strong smell it's, it will all, all this would be it's varnish okay it's got polyurethane in as well polyurethane based varnish always do smell do not like it make sure you're working in well ventilated area for goodness sake windows open doors open and possibly a mask so i'm just going to quickly just mix that around i do add water i need to but these paints are a lot thicker so here we go colors i'm going to add to the pouring medium oh this is derivative matisse australian yellow green i'm going to try and copy the one that i've just posted on the various facebook groups which I had, um, it was on a square six by six, I think, tile, which I had um, scanned, I scanned it to a high resolution. This is what I do with all of these Shelley Technique ones. Um, I never, very rarely do I sell the originals. If I sell the originals, it's normally on a, um, a tile and I put that within a, a resin it, then I put it in a shadow box so it's nicely framed. But most of the time I just scan them. So I do them a lot on just normal tiles, ceramic tiles. Scan it to a high resolution DPI 600 because I've got a bog standard printer scanner here, Canon. And then I email that file, send it off, that image to um, my local gallery, um, who's also the chap that works there is fantastic. He does some amazing framing work and he will then print it and then it can go up to, this is why you need a very good high quality image. It's much better to take um, an image on a scanner as opposed to using your phone because I think a lot of phones these iPhones I think only go up to something like a 72 dpi I I've got a 600 dpi scanner I can go to which is great so the bigger you go it retains its quality and it's a good image okay so yeah I, I managed to get um I posted it re recently it was a three foot square um incredible when you think about it, it came from a six and six inch tile a three foot square stretched canvas it looks awesome and i'll be honest with you they've actually been very successful um selling wise people just love it because they're so unique you know so guys don't worry about it if you do it on one of these if you do it on a tile just get it scanned and then get it blown up right so i'm going to add my first color so I'm just going to put a square of this. This is actually very high pigmentated, whatever you call it, high pigment. I'm just going to mix it up. And it's good that it's high pigment because sometimes with this actual Valspar pouring medium, it can dull the colours. Look, it's really beautiful. Let's see if I can put the light on. Just bear with me a second. It's working. Let's have a look get it a bit closer there. it's very very thick let me just try and mix that all in that's all the pouring medium on the edges of the cup so this is very thick and that's what you want hold on it's i'd say this technique out of all the pouring techniques uses the thickest consistency unlike the Dutch pour, which uses the thinnest consistency. Okay, it's like that. Quite gloopy. All right, can you get that? It's gloopy. There. So that's one colour done. Because these paints have got to be kind of thick enough really to withstand that pillow so they don't sink. Next, I'm using um, Matisse, Derivan Matisse um, Flow Australian Green Sap. I've got a bit of a zesty theme going on here. Didn't get any paint out of here. Oh God, splodge loads out of there. I do find this bit incredibly boring. I'll just switch that light off a little bit. I really can't stand mixing these paints together. Oh, this is why I do like the Dutch pour, because it's just water and paint. This is all a bit laborious, to be honest. But if you get it right, it does, like I say, yield some beautiful results. Very uni unique, gorgeous looking cells. All right, that's had a good mix. Oh, I should just get the light on for you. 
so it's gone up. See how thick that is? Yeah, you got it? There, okay. Next, I'm going to add sand. Good old sand. I love this. This goes in a lot of my um, neutral pools. I've been quite successful with the neutral pools because people like neutral colours for their homes. It tends to sort of lend itself well to home interiors. Okay, so I'm just going to mix that one up as well. Next, a bit of gold. This time I'm using my Specialist Craft Gold. Let me just switch that off. It is Artist Acrylics uh, Specialist Crafts again, but this time it's X6, not X2, which means it's thicker, okay, because it's premium. It's called premium, not free flow, X6, okay. This does, and when I first saw this, I thought, oh, this is gold. This doesn't look very vibrant or very metallic, but when you open it, I'll show you if I can. It's beautiful. Beautiful. I wonder if I can. Let me put the light on again. Oh, it's just incredible. Quite thick though. Okay. So I'm just going to mix a bit of that in. I will show you. I'm just going to get a bit like that on the stick and mix it into my pouring medium. So you're just mixing all your colours. Now, this is where I find I do have a bit of a problem with this pouring me this actual pouring medium Valspar when I'm using the metallics. Okay. It, it, look, I'll tell you what it does. And now people do use pigments, don't even get me started on those. Okay. They have driven me insane. I still don't like them. Um <clears throat> I won't use them. I won't use them in this technique. I don't actually use them in any technique. Right, but that's just me. Some people have great success. It depends if you're if you're able to get the right ingredients and I can't. Look, this is gold and look at this. It's not working. It's just gone dull. 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 So I'm not gonna use it. So we can suck the gold in this. So this is where I suppose that you can, some, if you can get the right gold, I, I have got another one, so just bear with me a second and see if I can do anything with that. Um, this is nice. Studio Acrylics PBO. And this is um, rich gold, so I might just have a little go and see if I can, if that makes any difference by introducing that. So just bear with me a second and see if I can. If that makes any difference to the mixture. Mm, yeah, I guess it is a bit, still not fantastic to be honest, but I'll bung, bung a bit of it in and see what happens. It's actually gone too thick now. So you can either add a little bit more of your Valspar if it goes a bit thick, or I add a bit of water. Just a wee bit of water, don't like it. It's just, like, it's just a, a little bit... Um, too thick at the moment. So let's try a bit more. Yeah, not sure about that to be honest. Okay, last colour. Oh, this is boring, this mixing of colours. I'm just going to get another bit off because I've run out. I'm going to mix the black. So I'm using in this Amsterdam acrylic standard series oxide black. The paint's out the way. Now we've got the exciting bit. I should put everything away, otherwise the lid on that valve spot is very stinky and yuck. I'm just going to give this spoon that I'm using this tablespoon a bit of a clean because we do not want to get this varnish into our cell activator. Mm, cell activator. I mean, if you'd have asked me a year ago what a cell activator was, I'd be like, oh God, it sounds like something out of a science lab or hospital. All these new techniques I've learned. These new words and phrases. Pillow, cell activator. <laughs> Fairy blooms. Right, okay. Now, 
this stuff that I'm going to show you now, you probably know what it is. God, it's controversial. <laughs> is the Aussie Flow Troll, okay? I am not going to lie. I don't lie in any of my videos, I'm very honest. This stuff, Aussie Flood Flow Troll. Well, it's not Aussie, it's just Flood Flow Troll. Acrylic paint and stain conditioner. Sorry, it's out of focus there. Um, does the job with regard to getting the cells, okay? It just does, all right? You can... Um, you can try and use just the acrylic paint, which I'm going to mix with it in a minute, by itself and with water. You do get some success just using the Amsterdam. So this is what I'll be mixing it with. This stuff is fantastic. Amsterdam acrylics, um, standard series, titanium white. Okay. This and this make your cell activator. This alone with water can also make a cell activator, but this is only in my opinion be careful what I say here because this is such a controversial technique at times shouldn't be I mean arts are you should be having fun you know everybody should just have fun and chill out get all heavy about it <laughs> um, this stuff's great if you um, mix it with water alone for your cell activator however if you start to go too big and I'm only using a six inch canvas um, substrate here piece of wood if you start to go bigger that's when the structure of the cells start to break away. Okay, they start to split up and break. So, I am going to use Floetrol. Now I get this, I get mine, okay, I'll post a link in the description from eBay. Okay, this comes all the way from Aussie. Well, I, can't, I can't believe that I do this really. <laughs> It's absolutely crazy. Now this is a 500 milliliters, it's a little cute little bottle. It costs me, and postage as well, for this, probably around about 23, 24 pounds, okay? But this lasts, lasts for ages, okay? You can get hundreds and hundreds of pieces out of this, in case you don't need a lot. And you can, you can actually save your cell activator, all right? I mean, all these paints I mixed up today, it'll probably make about another three pieces, all right? So, here we go. Now, this should run off the stick in a thin stream. So I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean here to get the right consistency. So, for example, the pillow should be the thickest part, okay? The paints should be next, slightly thinner than the pillow consistency, and the CA should be Thinner, the thinnest. Alrighty ho, so what I'm going to do is, because it's like gold dust this, you don't want to waste any of it. My little yogurt glass pot. I'm going to pour a tablespoon into there. It smells as well. Ugh. I don't like, to be honest with you, I don't like using all these chemicals. And I'm going to pour another teaspoon. Altogether, it's 20 millilitres, 20 mil. So, a tablespoon and a half or something. 20 mil. All right. Then I'm going to give my titanium. And I'm going to add a teaspoon. Oh, God. Well, this is half a teaspoon. I keep losing these. These things are great, but I don't know where they all go. So this is half a teaspoon, very thick into that. So I'm going to add a little bit more. It's about a teaspoon. Can level it off. Okay, that's done. Let's get that out of the way. Right. And now you have to give this a really good stir. We're actually going to mix all that paint in to the Australian flow troll. Just keep stirring and stirring. So it all sort of mixes well, just down the sides and everything. Now I know we can get um, something called Oa troll in the UK. 
and we can also get flood flow troll which is the american version okay however the ingredients differ completely from the aussie one i think the difference is the australian one contains a stained wood conditioner of sorts um i don't know really the science behind it i have checked it out before but can't really be bothered but i just know that this works to get the cells and you know like i said you can just use a titanium white and water alone because that does also produce cells but this stuff does the job okay so i'm giving it a good mix really good mix let's have a look there you go ready mm -hmm. running off just so I can get a bit more light for you guys here yeah it's running off it's thin it's thin it's a bit like the um, Dutch pool base and it kind of bounces back off the stick, it's some. Um, keep getting it out of focus. Sorry, I'm not looking at the screen. All right, I'm trying to show you guys. See how it sort of springs back a bit. It's obviously the wonderful stuff that's in there, the elasticity of it. Okay, so we're ready. Okay, now the fun bit. Right, so we've done dealt with the pillow. We've dealt with the pouring medium and mixing of paints. We've dealt with the cell activator. Now I'm using a white cell activator here, but you can equally use a black one, which produces some awesome results. Okay, I use um, the uh, where is it? I've lost it. For the black, I use that golden carbon black. Okay, it is thicker. So you might need a little bit more of the flow troll and add a bit of water if you want, but as long as it's running off the um, stick. Okay, now I'm using, like I say, I would probably be more confident if I was using my house paint, okay? My Valspar Silk Green base, as opposed to my Specialist Crafts Acrylic Normal White and PBO. But like I said, I've only just bought some more of the, uh, the wall paint and it needs to settle to get rid of those bubbles because it would just be awful. So I'm going to try with this, okay, this mixture, to now blow out the blue. Now, once you've put your, your, your pillow down, you need to put your paints down in a puddle. You don't need much at all, all right? Tiny little amounts, and I'll show you. You need to be kind of quick, all right, because you don't want those colours sinking into the pillow because it's hard enough to blow this damn thing out as it is. All right, so anyway, we're going to give it a go. And this might not come out <laughs> like my first one. This is another thing annoying about this acrylic pouring malarkey. You can never, very rarely, get the same result the next time. You think, oh wow, I love it, I love it, I'm gonna do another one, and then it's like, yuck, or you forget the paint order, or the paints you've used, and you're guessing. So this is just purely to see if we can get some nice cells. Let me see if this is thick enough. See, see nice sort of creamy halo. You don't need to take it all to the edge. There, there you go. See that? I can see a few bubbles in there because I was mixing it. Good idea really would be to let your paint sit for a while if it's a new can. So it's like a puddle, see? Puddle, pillow. Now we're going to lay the colours on top. So, I don't know what order I did them in, let's just try this. So a little bit like that. It's dropped in the centre. Okay, so there's the first one, which is the... Um, yellow green and then we're going to use the sap green these are the derivative Matisse paints just blob a bit of that on top like so it does take a while you can see how thick they are because it does take a while for it to um, leave the stick now a bit of the sand a little bit too thick that one i think 
Okay, yeah, that's too thick. Never mind. And a little bit of the black for contrast, which mixed with the sand it might come out like a sort of grey colour. You don't need much. Ah. I don't know about this gold. I'll put a tiny bit on, but I'm not really happy about it. I've put a tiny wee bit on. That's more than I expected, but never mind. Right. Now we're going to put the cell activators. Let me show you. There you go. It's a little. Move this down a bit. No, I better not because it'll probably fall off the stand. It's just a little puddle of colours. Right, I better get working because it's already sinking in. Then I just put a blob. So to do a circular mo motion with the stick, just enough to cover it. Okay, now when we blow out. <laughs> Don't blow directly straight down hard. Okay, you need to get you need to be able to get the cell activator to move over the colours. So my head sort of moves a bit like this. Okay, take a deep breath. This is where I nearly pass out doing this. Ready? Blowing down, but gentle. See, I can already see some sounds coming up there. Move it around. Next caller. Move it around. Make sure you're moving that colour over. Oops. Fall off my stand. Okay. You're, you're trying to move. Push that with your, with your blow over the colours. Okay. And then, then what I do is I blow out each little corner. So you get a bit of colour. Okay, in here. There. Let me just wipe my hands. Now, I can see some cells popping up. Give it a second to see what pops up in the middle. The centre bit, where the CA has been sitting, can tend to get stuck. So you wait, give it a bit of time before you start to um, tilt it, all right, to get your composition. Okay, give it some time and then I will wrap it a couple of times to try and get it to move. This bloody technique, I tell you, sorry, can take forever, and I mean forever, to get from one corner to the other. And I keep turning it round so I can get those petals where they should be. So there you go, I'm going to bring you in up close to the finished piece. Okay, those are your beautiful cells, those lovely greens coming through from the webbing and lacing. So there you go, I hope you um, enjoyed this video and you found it useful. I know it's quite lengthy but um, I had to show you the whole process. I could have just done the mixing of the colours and the pouring medium by itself, but I think it's more beneficial to see the whole picture, the whole story from start to finish. Um, it's not an easy technique to learn. Um, it will take a while and also needs lots of practice. So keep at it and um, okay, bye for now.